be in a country where it is legal to gamble. So go ahead and sign up at betway.com. But we'll move on to our next pick. Not not many, not much reserve time left. Six seconds. I don't know if Vegas taking their time here. Yeah, they're kind of forced into a weird position. Ooh, the Visage pick in Grand Finals Game 1. It does give you good teleport targets for Tinker, so that's pretty strong. Their high ground's not bad with Juggernaut, just drop healing ward. So a couple things about Visage, first of all. Um, the hero has been buffed in a couple ways. I actually played him last week, I think. The familiars drop a lot faster to the ground, which is kind of nice. This is kind of like a sexy Bambo hero specialty, though. Um, he used to play it in Zephyr for a little bit and uh, genuinely really liked the hero. He has some farm problems, needs to get farm, and his base magic resistance is quite low. But he's this is like a perfect game for Visage in a couple ways. Like, it's almost impossible for Visage to die to an E-Blade combo, just because once he gets his Gravekeeper's Cloak up, he has huge armor and magic resistance for the first couple of hits. That's a good point. I never thought about that. But not, not only that, too, I think Visage, like you talked about, TP targets for the Tinker. And the Beast Masters will, so they clearly are invested in the Tinker. The Visage, like you talked about, is good for pushing as well. Um, not the best roaming support, I guess, until you get birds, I suppose. Grave Chill's okay. But, like you said, I mean, it's just a hero that really never gets picked up. I don't, we saw it a couple times at TI, but not really many times. Yeah, he, he's got some iffy things about him. Um, the bats getting drop time buff getting changed was really nice, though, honestly. Um, before they changed it so that it animation mismatched the stun time a little bit, that was weird. So, um, this last change, though, I think has helped him a bit. Just, it might be hard for him to get back into the meta. He really does feel like a very farm slower, though. You kind of need lane farm, um, whether or not that's a static lane that your bats can farm or your hero can stand there. So he probably works best as um, just pulling constantly, or what you can do is grab a carry jungler that can go to the jungle right away. Um, and Juggernaut can do that, so who knows? Maybe he'll, he'll get a lot of space on the Visage. The last pick will come out of is going to be Icebergs Invoker, where they won the fourth game of the series yesterday with his Invoker. It was a very close game. They almost lost it to Escape. Uh, Escape had a quite a bit of a lead at one point in time, and they just couldn't kind of secure the game. They lost a couple of pickoffs um, that were incredibly important, and thus Vega were able to win that game. So the Invoker is again picked up for Iceberg, and... He actually had a rough start in the lane. He is a good player. He has great combinations of skills. But what ended up happening is that he had to get the two kills in the lane to actually help him out with the laning phase because he wasn't finding any CS early on in the game. But it's still a good choice, though, I think. I like the Invoker a lot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, against Tinker, it can be a bit iffy. Um, putting Spirit Breaker in the game as well should help Invoker win the lane just because SP might show up randomly. That's definitely one thing that Kaipi's lacking, actually, is really early teamfight disables. Whereas on the other side, Vega has both Spirit Breaker to create early space. They've got Sun Strikes and Shadow Demon as well for defensive purposes and maybe setups for those. So it's kind of similar to what they did um, before. And it was pretty effective, and it should be able to create space to allow for a Morphling Batrider to get a lot done. Again, with Visage, though, if he gets a couple armor levels, he can resist a lot of that damage. Um, obviously, you can't be resisting against pure damage, so that's maybe a good counter. But I do I do like the Vega lineup a lot. It's it's has really good longevity. It's got pretty good fight and obviously very good early gank. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, they, they can rebound from any sort of early deficit through the Midas of Invoker if he goes for one. That Rider Blink Dagger, obviously. Morphling, if he gets shut down early, it's kind of tough. But usually that's not going to happen. He'll find some CS somewhere, I think, for the most part. Have you ever seen like a Morphling really have a tough time in the early game and just kind of like lose early? Yeah, it's been a while, I guess. But it, I've definitely seen times where Morphling just has kind of an iffy lane, doesn't really get his items fast enough, and just seems really weak. It definitely does happen, but I think most players are getting back into playing Morphling at full efficiency, just always having a good lane, getting a lot of CS kind of a thing. But I think the big crucial thing for Kaipi here is actually Tinker's performance this game, mm -hmm. just because the faster that he gets up his Blink Dagger or Soul Ring um, is the, the faster speed in which he can just go to lane, spam missiles on Force Morphling to go jungle. Those are things that are be mostly dangerous, I think. We'll wait and see what Kaipi want to pick last year. I believe it will be their secondary support. Interesting they saved their supports for last two. Uh, Night Stalker could be their four, also could be their three, theoretically. They could send the Beastmaster to the jungle if they want, but it will be the four position as Night Stalker is picked up by Bambo, a definite Bambo hero in my opinion. Ooh. This is one of the epitomes of Bambo, I feel like. So does this mean Pilot Dice playing a visit? I, I thought I think for so. sure it was going to be yeah. Bambo, but it must I be. guess it's They could switch, be... I guess, but... They could, um... I wonder if they're going to aggro. No, they can't. 
I could aggro actually. Um, it's I think I would like them to do an aggro triline actually. If it's uh, Shadow Demon, Spirit Breaker, Morphling, they can easily beat that with something like Jug, Visage, Night Stalker. I don't know if they will try it though. Um, Beastmaster versus Bat isn't very good though. Yeah. On the other side, that's, next from. that's not. <laughs> That's the reason why I don't think they're going to go for it. I feel like that rider could just kill Beastmaster relatively. Well, I've actually seen Beastmaster versus Bat Rider lands go okay. Even at yeah, I think there was a couple of lands like that. That because you have the boar up, and eventually, if you get the boar so on the Bat Rider, then he can't quite you know do his his firefly. Yeah, and... but I I feel like what's gonna the only thing you're doing is preventing your death. I don't think I've ever seen a Beastmaster get a kill. Oh, nice! That Sunstrike actually spotted out Bambo's TP. That's Very huge. valuable there. That's um, huge. He goes, he goes for boot start. It's gonna put a ward down, so it'll have to be a little bit tricky, maybe, about where he places that. And the pilot I play envisage going for a tango clarity. Nothing too weird there. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I th like you said, I think Kaipi has the biggest chance to win the best of five due to their past history so far. And I do like the how interesting Kaipi's draft is, but I, I feel like Vega's lineup is a lot stronger in the early game. Translating to the late game is going to be a bit tough, though. So I think that Kaipi should have this one. But I think the early game is going to be a little rough. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on... It's going to be an interesting game. I'm I'm really excited to see how Bambo does in this dice soccer. This is one of, one of my favorite heroes to watch in the four position especially. So it's going to be fun to see how he performs. And it's kind of like the Spirit Breaker, right? You want to be involved early, but not too early, I guess, is the thing. Spirit Breaker can be yeah. involved from level one, kind of. But you, you want the Knights to be involved as soon as that first Knight hits. You'd like to be level three or four, theoretically, when that happens. You start roaming around, finding kills, maybe two points in Hunter, or one point in Hunter, and one point in Silence. There's a lot of options here for this Night Stalker, and that's the most important thing, because he's going to be controlling the ganks early on in the game before the Visage gets level 6. Yeah, if anything, he's going to try to force Vegas heroes to overreact to what he's doing, rather than the opposite, and that, that would be really beneficial for them. Again, their lockdowns are a little weak, so, and he's got very high natural HP due to Night Stalker getting a lot of strength, so he might be able to survive the ganks a bit better than some of his allies would. Did you see what Mag's doing, by the way? Yeah, it's crazy. I was just about to say that. He's just down in the freaking trees. I don't... This is crazy. Is he going to pull the creep wave, or is he yeah, going to go for... Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think he's going to pull the creep wave north, or he's going to pull it with him to the tree line, in which case his opponents might not realize where he's going with it. Every time JJ draws a question mark, it tr triggers the hell out of me, honestly. Okay, but no this piece. is... Going. This is the most important thing. Mag's going to grab the creep wave and... Looks like he will... Oh, look at that body block from Sixing. It was close, though, but it looks like he's going to pull the creep wave. And he he'll be successful. The camp was important as well, because then um, Pilot I could have aggroed the creep wave to neutrals. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you actually block those. Yeah, that was impressive. I like that a lot. Uh, there's a couple heroes mid right now. They're looking for... Well, it's actually a dueling between the both of them. FNG and Iceberg going up against Bone7 as well as Bambo. Pretty interesting. Bone7 obviously having the advantage right now in CS, but... Really, what's more important is if they get a kill in this lane, and we'll see if uh, either team can provide that. Early on, Iceberg probably not, but Bone 7 with Laser and Heat Seeking Missile, even at like level 2, can pump out a lot of damage. Yeah, they can maybe get a kill. And back in the safe lane, Mag again felt really safe doing that, just because of the fact that there's a Visage in lane. It's just so weak. You get a, a, a very weak slow that gives you maybe one extra right click, so um, with Jug Spin, maybe that pays off, but it's going to be pretty simple for Mag to get fast levels here. I didn't notice this, but there the, there's a Vega ward at the top lane uh, underneath the tower, or close to the tower, I should say. And I I don't know how that got placed there, but it's such a good lane ward. Uh, yeah, he, he placed it pretty early when smoked. Um, they smoked from base and approached later, so. That's good. No way, Bambo we'll kill himself in neutrals. Never seen that before. <laughs> never never happened before. Shocking. Mag gonna go ahead and dive by I die a little bit, and then steal the creep wave again. And yeah. so... This is amazing for the Bat Rider. It's so difficult to play against this. Actually, the best thing you can do usually is heavily stack the large camp, and you stack it so many times that there's like, oh, oh I swear, might die. He is going to go down. They get the kill. Even the fairy fire can't save him. FNG will complete the charge. I don't believe he is bashed, so he's going to just give him a charge, and that's going to be it. And a little bit of damage, no, nothing else really. And yeah, again, Bone 7 with laser and the damage from Bambo's Void. It's more than enough to bring bring down the enemy uh, mid laner, Iceberg. 
Hold on. Um, so yeah, what you can do here is you can heavily stack the large camp and then pull with that. That way when Batrider tries to interrupt it, they have like four or five magic resistance creeps. And then they have something like 70% magic resistance and Batrider just can't kill the creeps. He can steal your creeps, he can kill those, but killing the neutrals is almost impossible. Or less beneficial. Evangie going for a charge on bottom. I don't know how much that's going to be successful, but they're going on Iceberg again in the mid lane. I think Sig Sig should be fine. He Iceberg have will spin, survive though. as well. It's a little scary. They, they have to dive this out if they want the skill, and right now, Mag is just feeling really dominant here. He's got the Firefly. I think he needs to be careful, but Sig Sig, six stacks, taking a ton of damage, but the tower hits doing too much sun strike. It's on point, but can they bring him down? The charge is up. Six Sig so low. He's juking through the trees. They get the kill on the Batrider. FNG will find that pickup on Sing Sing. Meanwhile, they're diving mid. They're looking for Iceberg. The ice wall will get dropped in. FNG still that tower. One more right click. Range Iceberg creep. will fall as well. 3-3. Three, three. Does he have the Wild Axes? He does. Level 1. He gets it. With the level 1 Wild Axes, he gets the kill. The Coon comes in. It does the job. Very impressive. Trades all over the place, but Kai P gained the advantage pretty much everywhere. Pilot I getting a lot of levels out of that too, which is pretty nice. Unless he's just going to die here. Ooh. It's just so hard to stop a Batrider from bullying you when you when you have a visage. It's really the problem with the hero. Well, they nerfed him so many times in the past due to his his absolute dominance in tri lanes. So he's a lot weaker now. Uh, Tinker should see that charge coming. He actually didn't react fast enough. Bone Seven's gonna get charged up first. Hit bash. Here comes Iceberg. Cold snap. Bone Seven's like that first hit bash is really annoying. So he's gonna get hit up another bash coming out from FMG. It's not there. He gets silenced so as he was looking for another charge. Iceberg will grab a rune, throw down the ice wall. Bamboo's like, I'm not touching that. Let me back away. That's that's fine. Yeah, Bone Seven not quite watching. Uh, Bamboo ping that one out there, but he doesn't end up dying. Doesn't get the rune though. It's a little costly. Well, I also shifted from the bot rune, grabbed a DD, and Beastmaster's gonna go back to jungle. Interesting. That's doing really well, though. Yeah, I it's mean, got an insane amount of last hits. <laughs> that's the one lane that has not been disturbed for Vega has been the morphling. And again, FN, we've seen him carry games before on on different heroes. We talked about this the other day. Anti Mage, he could kind of solo carry almost to a certain extent, but not if you're really far behind. And it's kind of one of those situations again. And then this time it's a morphling, so it's kind of hard to solo carry. Not impossible, but. Yeah, he's he's good at it. Um, I, I'd argue even better than Anti Mage. He just has to get to the point where um, he actually does have his items. Nice That's, kill. Uh, Sunstrike kill. Yeah. yeah, it looks like charge with us. Charge into Sunstrike. He was low. The the Beastmaster was very low. Yeah. So interesting kill and unfortunate death for Beastmasters. They're charging mid again. Bone Seven. They want to get something going. Sioma is way too far behind that tower. Pile I die. Looking for Soul Assumption. Well, he has two hits of it, but the laser will bring him down. Now he's got three stacks of soul substitute. There's a lot here. The laser's coming through. Heat seeking missiles. The sun strike's gonna miss. Everyone is dying from Vega. Finally, they will get a kill, but it's a three for one exchange. And Iceberg might follow this as well. They've got the grave chill. They should have Void up ready to go as well. And Iceberg will end up dying. And it's four for one early on in the game at five minutes and 40 seconds. What a dive. That was too heavy from Vega. They were completely set up for that. They felt like it was going well because they got the Night Stalker kill, but with Pilot Die rotating, he picked up a second level of Grave Chill as well. Four seconds duration instead of just three. And that kind of attack speed and movement speed advantage over them just kept them under tower. But it really was down to Vega in the first place. Shadow even put himself way out of position trying to set up on the Tinker, and that cost him everything. That was a crazy dive. But Vega will go for a smoke this time. A little bit of a safer play. They'll head towards the bottom lane for now, or at least the bottom rune spot. And Iceberg will save mid. Oh my god, that laser damage against Iceberg is kind of nuts. It's pretty much like at least a quarter of his health away. Sunstrike. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. Coming out from Iceberg. He gets the kill. But now he might die himself. As the, the heat seeking misses as well as the laser will come out, and I feel like I've seen this move before. FNG will charge mid. They were setting up for that wraparound, but now FNG is getting caught. Shadow Poison, and Sioma is so out of position, he cannot help FNG. The earn charge and the right click will take him down. Shadow Poison again. Bambo is still pretty tanky, so he won't die from it, nor does he get hit by the Shadow Poison. Sioma, he's going to throw it up and cancel the earn charge, and Sioma will back away. But still, again. Uh, two quick kills going there. It's a very aggressive game. Kai P getting a lot on the board. And Visage is 3 0 and 4 right now. It's actually incredible. He's able to pick up his ultimate now. Um, he'll probably pop back, go back and heal and start farming. But the mid is coming again. 
And they're gonna try for this time. They have the sudden strike ready to go. Bone Seven's gonna get hit up by it. He's still in trouble, getting charged up. There's the lasso as well. Bone Seven should fall here. Pilot Eye might be next if he's not careful. Good bird drops, but he needed those earlier to save Bone Seven's life, and that's a huge pickup. Third net worth here dropping down, and uh, they're gonna get some money back on the side of Vega. There's so many farmed Radiant heroes, though. Like, even Visage is close to what Invoker is at. Invoker's at 2,000 net worth, and Visage is at 1,800. Vega's really behind right now. The, the relative farm levels of everybody in Kaipi are really good. The good news is, obviously, that the Morphling has a lot going well for him at this point. And True. that's the, the best thing that they could possibly hope for, is that this Morphling continues to farm and... They rotate together, start taking over the game, and making space for the other heroes as well. And we'll see if that's going to be the case. Uh, for now, there's a couple of heroes up top. If they want to go for a kill, it would be very difficult, but they could try. Roar should be up and is for the Beastmaster and Bambo. He's got a couple points at Void. Right, once he gets Lincolns, everything's going to be a lot easier for him, that's for sure. Although they could try the kill now. Um, go for it, it looks like. Harass, it looks like. Oh, the birds, yeah. And F, they could just morph if he really needs to. Pretty safe for him just to do this. It's maybe a downside that he showed that it was here because they really they essentially had about three heroes in the area. But once they get BOTs on Tinker, then it's actually straightforward. Although because he went for more nuke levels, he doesn't have very much March on the machines, which means he can't just passively farm in these times when he's worried about the SP charge. So that makes everything a bit harder. And not only that, but his jungle is warded pretty heavily. There's a ward obviously towards that that hard camp down there, and then there's a ward in the middle of the jungle as well. So they can see him. If he's jungling pretty effectively. Charge coming in. Vega will turn their attention towards bottom lane just to push it out. But top lane looks like they are going on that morph thing. He's very low. Silenced up. Solo sub should gonna come through. It's the hit, but not doing enough damage. There's the void coming out. He's got plenty of mana left to strike the morph. I don't know if he has any agility though. It looks like he has plenty. Gonna go back in agility. Morph as he salves up and he wants to get the most out of that salve. I don't blame him. So they're just going to try to take the tower in the meantime. Um, they're doing a really good job pressuring, even if they didn't get the kill there. Just forcing Morphling to back off repeatedly is really nice. Yeah, Should that's... give some space to the Tinker, at least. Although, he's using that space to just take the tower. His losses are pretty low. 27 at 10 minutes, but he has been pressured heavily. Yeah, well, I mean, and also, he's been involved in a couple of kills on assists, so... It could be a lot worse for both both mid laners, I think, at this point. Tinker could be a lot worse off, and... And Midas is coming soon for the Invoker, so it's kind of recovering a little bit for Vega. It's still, like you said, there's so many, there's a lot of net worth on both supports for, for Kai P. And we'll see where that transitions. They do end up taking down that tier 1 tower. They send a hawk up to the north to see if anyone was going to TP in. No such luck there. And Jug continues just to farm bottom lane and get towards the drum at this point. Yeah, they're again focusing on early game items for Jug. But they are going to smoke wrap around on the mid lane, though. This could, if they get a roar, it's a guaranteed kill. What oh, he smoke for? broke though top. What, what yeah. did that break? Oh, there was a bank was in the jungle. Yeah, but I don't know if they've seen him yet. That ward, I don't think spotted him. They pinged it, so it looks like they did. Yeah, they know that he's there at least, and huh. uh, they're gonna avoid the smoke of sea gate. Could have sat a different behind a different tree. Um, the next tree clump to the left would have been safer, but all they need is a roar and somebody dies. Mm, Sioma, yep. The roar will come out, and the burst is there. He cannot even get off the interruption before dying. That poor Shadow Demon gets obliterated. And Stig Stig is going to come in, and they're going to transition this into a push and try to get some more gold going their way. And so Kai P continue to just check mark off uh, objectives one by one. Yeah, Sing rotated over just in case there was a team fight. Basically, he didn't really need to be there, and this slightly decreases his farm level. But it's all about the potential fight. If everybody on Vega shows up, and Sing Sing has to TP, then walk five seconds ahead and then fight, it could be completely different. But if he shows up randomly, maybe gets a free Omni Slash on somebody that doesn't expect and completely turns around getting into tower and a big team fight. So just safe play like that for carries to rotate. Blink last, so it's now been revealed. Bambo, Sunstrike, not going to connect. They're going to miss it. There's the waveform. Bambo sticks up. Here comes Bone 7. March the machine will stop them from pushing any further. Threatened by Bam or Bone 7's uh, CP in, and that's just... That's a lasso. That's one of the first times you'll see a blink reveal on the lasso, not successful in getting a kill. However, bottom lane, Nether Strike's gonna go. They have the gold staff, and Sing is in a lot of trouble. Oh, three bashes! Are you kidding? Well, the charge and two. That's still pretty damn impressive. It was two right in a row for FNG. 
And Ziggy is, I'm sure, not happy about that. Yeah, they really needed that kill, though, especially because they missed the top one um, because of the missed on strike. So they catch up a little bit there. Uh, Boots of Travel is now finally up for Tinker, though. So every fight gets harder from here on out because Tinker can be there if he needs to be on top of those bats. I'll wait and see if uh, Bone 7 continues to get the items that you usually see on Tinker. Again, right now he's just got bots, no soul ring, but then we'll see a blink dagger followed up by Aether Lens Ags is the usual build. He even picks up the soul ring recipe. So for the for the start now, obviously the same build as it's always been. Ziggs so able to TV back bottom to go for some more farm. And he's only down a little bit in net worth to FN. You look at FN, he's gonna be getting his Lincoln Sphere pretty soon, but he still has brown boots. Yeah, that's just tower advantage, really, for Sing Sing. He's died twice now. He's doing okay, but he is a little bit behind. It's like they're just going to keep giving farm to Pile I Die here. Um, he's got uh, 600 gold in the bank. Looks like maybe a mech, possibly Tranquil Boots. Not sure yet. And he's kind of going a little bit of everything for skill build, actually. Two points in Gravekeeper's Cloak now. The two, so, two, quite resistant two, to nukes. 2-2-2-1 two, 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 build. Very, very rare to see this. <laughs> it's just... Kind of funny. All, all the skills are pretty good with only a few skill points is the, the thing there. So who knows, maybe he will in, he'll even max out Gravekeeper's Cloak first, the possibility. I, I mean, don't remember what the threshold for damage is, but I know that Gravekeeper's Cloak is much better against very low damage over time spells than it used to be. But I don't know if that counts for Firefly, or Firefly might do much, too much. No, I'll wait and see if that does... I mean, if the Batrider comes to defend, we can find out, but it looks like this, with the Necro Book especially, it looks like this tower is absolutely dead. Uh, glyph-wise, I don't think they have one, and it's just gone. It did have a Glyph there, we're gonna use it though. I just don't feel comfortable fighting yet. The, the strength of Kaipi right now in their 5 mana is just amazing, compared to what Vega wants to do. Vega's got Blink Dagger and all, but what else do they have for team fight? It's pretty much just Blink Lasso. And well, speaking of Blink Blast, so they'll find Bambo, but still, he should maybe be okay. They get off some armor, and FNG is going to get blown up by an Omni Slash. Sing was hoping to jump that to Mag, but he's going to head up to the north, and Sing will chase Later. after him. Pilot Die, going to go ahead and Soul Assumption him. Grave Chill could be up here pretty soon. Nice Looks like it's down. They're going to use it. Mag going to get dove. How far are they willing to take this? Good disruption. Here comes the Heat Seeking Missiles. That'll hit under the Mag, and now FN going in. Waveform coming through. The Lincoln Sphere has been picked up and broken. Bambo's low. Sunstrike, Bambo avoids it. They split the damage and now they have to get away. It's a little too much diving going on on the side of Kaipi, but they lose nothing. They're going to go again, though, with the healing ward. They want to pick up this tower. The march will come out, and it's going to be very tough to defend this as Vega. I mean, especially Bone 7 can come in and out of the team fight easily. Bambo dodging in the waveform changed everything. He's even got a Midas now, too. Bambo is creating so much space, pushing them back, helping out along with the tinker. Tower's still taking a little time to bring down, and they will lift it. Not sure how much Kai P really want to go for this. You can see there is Mag in the jungle, wrapping kind of around. 3-3 sees this, looking for a potential roar, but he'll blink away. Now they'll go back to the mid lane and focus their efforts on said tower. Kind of hard because their healing ward's on cooldown for a bit, but as long as they get initiation on somebody, it should be fine. Ten more seconds until the healing ward, and Vega just doesn't have ways to stop this. They have actually no anti-push heroes this game. Well, yeah, that would have been nice to be able to stop the push, but not going to happen. It looks like they lose all of their tier twos except that top tower, which is just too much. Too much gold going the way of Kai P for now. F and G stops his. Oh, do they see him? Oh, the roar Ooh. almost got off from 3-3. Three, three. That would have been a pretty big kill. Or a nice kill, at least. Iceberg, by the way, it has would have been a big up. kill. Definitely big over nice. Oh, he gets caught top this time, though. Bone 7, still. It's only Mag. He almost kills Mag. Sunstrike won't hit. Barely misses on Bone 7. He'll TP out. I think Pilot Dice is just going straight medallion into... What's it called? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Solar Crest, there we go. It'll be pretty good, just uh, using it on Juggernaut as Juggernaut goes high ground to the north in the back. Slightly greedy in some ways, but it's it's not that uncommon for Visage to go that build. It should help a lot against Morphling, actually, too. Almost against every hero, really, on Vega. They, they just don't have the best solutions this game against Kaipi's heroes, and something like Solar Crest is just going to make it worse. No, he picks up a Staff of Wizardry. Mm. Could be Ags, could be Staff. Don't see this being a Yules or anything like that. Um, Atos think... is also really good on Visage, so got a lot of options here, actually. Could yeah, be Necro. Good options. Uh... 
The only thing it's not for sure is Yules or Dagon. And yeah. One of those two I'm going to be blown away. It's probably not Necro as well, but I think Force... I would force say Atos is... or Ags is most likely. Force, Atos, Ags. I'm down we'll add the three of those, but... Uh, with how little people build Atos, although, like you said, it's, it's pretty good in this game with that hero. TP's to the bottom lane, they have, I think, some vision. Yeah, that ward is going to spot both Iceberg as well as Mag out. Iceberg is slow, he'll have to use his Ghost Walk. Detection is not there. Need some dust for that Invoker to bring him down, but they do get the Batrider, another important kill. And they continue to pile it up. Kaipi have 13 kills and six, uh, six deaths going their way. So they'll continue to split the map up. They have Bone 7 pushing out the lanes using the March of the Machines, and then people farming elsewhere. It's just so straightforward for them. They, they just group as four heroes, they run at somebody, and they kill them. And in the meantime, Bone 7's anti-pushing the other lanes. He's also getting farm and trying to keep accelerated. Is that Blink Dagger now done? And now he can farm a bit more aggressively with the Blink Dagger. And he needs to be careful. They're setting a trap from top, by the way. As you can yeah, see in the, the side shop, they're, they are waiting a long time for this kill. And there's even uh, more fleet coming from behind, but it looks like he just wants to take the farm for now. Is he going Scotty after Lincoln? Or is he just going to go Manta? Probably Manta, I feel like because of the silence from Night Stalker, not to mention the Omni Slash from Drug. It he, is kind of a meta game. He just wanted to get the ultimate orb early, I guess, even though I think most people would get the Asha early in this instance. Well, yeah, and... I think he's more worried about HP right now. The the ultimate orb ultimately gives... They mean to pun there, but it gives a lot more survivability and overall stats than Yasha. Yasha only gives like 16 agi or something. Right, right. It's more of a movement speed item to get you from camp to start. Sunstrike will go. It'll see that Roche is in fact happening, but it's not time to steal it or take down Roche itself, and then they can get the Aegis as a snatch. But Sing Sing will pick up the Aegis. They'll get the Roche on kill as well. So again, more objectives being taken down by Kai P, and it just feels sufficient. But now FN finally split pushing rather effectively. You can see he's doing a lot of work to that tier 2 tower. However, they still have a lot of work to do in objectives themselves. Vega are down so much in terms of tower gold. And it's only a 4,000 net worth lead somehow with Kai P with all of these towers down, which is the insane thing. Yeah, it's a really good sign for them, but it's still a little disconcerting considering how strong Kai P has oh, been early on. And it's, was not, and it's not like Kai P isn't going to scale. Like Bambo alone, he's got a Midas. <laughs> he's going to be building eggs. He's actually almost there. He's only about 1,400 gold away, and it's 20 minutes into the game. Really good time for him. FN's been spotted by the ward, but the really what happened was Bamba was looking for the kill of the wraparound, but they sent the four spirits in. And of course, with the four spirits, you're able to find uh, heroes like Bamba hiding in the trees without any problem whatsoever. And so they back away. Make it a replicate back to the well. More playing if he knows he's in trouble, he has to, he has the ability to replicate. Unless he gets sound stuff, but there's a link in sphere. So instead, the yeah. Cappy squad will head top and maybe look for someone in the jungle, which will be Mag, and he blinks away perfectly. He has to be worried. He could die to himself. Jug. Yep, SD. That's the best carry killer here on the game right there. It's the Aegis, though, and now they're going to try to TP out. Luckily, he won't lose his second life, but it looks like Sioma and FNG will get out. Nice job from Vega to bring down the enemy carry. Yep, all it takes is a disruption. You create two illusions that do 75% of your base damage. They also get the crit, because that's what Jug has, and then you ulti him afterwards. The Sunstrike was just the cherry on top. And maybe it'd be nice to have Soul Catcher, but he didn't even need it. His illusions just killed himself so fast. Yeah, that's uh, not fun for the Juggernaut. Downside to the stat-heavy build, basically. Um, is that his illusions that spawn ultimately will be good. Here comes the Lasso. Lasso, they found 3-3. He's going to be the void up. Sunstrike is there, and it's on 3-3 himself. They're very far behind this tower, but here comes no 7 Still not enough. The roar wasn't out in time. And Iceberg will take the backlash coming up from the Necro Warrior, but that's going to be it. They'll lose two quick ones, though Aegis as well as... The 3-3 Beastmaster, he's a big uh, network target. FN, however, getting spotted out. If a way to break Lincoln Spear, they do. They want the silence. He's ready to start morphing, and he will continue. He has it on him. The TP will come through. He's very tanky with strength. They can't go for that kill. It's too much. They're just trying to scare him back, and it's working. Uh, Bambo had no actual desire to go on him there, but just little moves like that put your opponents on on ease just really unhappy they just don't feel comfortable farming and you never really know if bamboo's being stupid then or if he's actually about to initiate on you so it just limits your farm level by a small amount even against really top tier players that's the bamboo effect my ash is completed for the morphling his recipe will come soon and we'll see what happens once he gets said man to style 
It is going to be an ATOS for Visage. Um, picks up Vit, uh, Vit Booster at the moment, so. Very soon, lots of HP, lots more mana pool to cast more slow assumptions, and more importantly is provide some nice slows so he can use his other abilities better. I would be great. He's going to get spotted, though, on top of this. Yeah, Pilot Eye is more than likely to oh, here. Oh. FN later. So the, his, his uh, passive was actually resisting against Firefly. At least before Morphling started attacking. So he was getting like full magic resistance against every tick of Firefly. If he was by himself, there's a chance that Bat just wouldn't have killed him in time. They want to fight bottom. And they're going to go in. Well, at least it looks like they're going to go in. There's the March coming out. And Mag and FN both moving up. It's 2 for 2 in terms of fighting ability. But it looks like neither team is going to commit. But Sig Sig again, the gank being set up. They're going to go for the charge. He doesn't have much room to go for Blade Fury here. This is a dangerous spot for Sig Sig to be in. There's the disruption. The Sunstrike's going to go. And it's going to do a lot of damage. He's going to have to mess the cell. Now the he's going to get caught with another blast. And another strike in Sig Sig is so low. But still might make it away with the Blade Fury. Now the charge of the Roar. How many slashes to get the kill? Oh, it's beautiful from Sig Sig. Nicely done. A little scary there. The, the best survive. Maybe there's going to be a gank on FN here. The best survive usually when you're ganked by an SD like that is you have to Omni Slash the Illusions. That usually works well, but Bambo might just die. Yeah, it's going to be close. They will stomp on him, but he replicates out. Again, silence with the Lincoln Sphere up, it's really hard to make him not morph or not replicate out. Even if you break the Lincoln Sphere, he could still jump pretty quickly. Bambo's just doing everything, basically. Um, he's finally got eggs picked up. Um, hasn't really been farming too much, just relying on uh, experience gold and AoE gold and Midas. That's pretty much eggs finished. He Although, it's eggs. a very long time until night. He got his eggs the same time that uh, the Invoker got his eggs. Obviously, the Invoker goes for other items earlier, but... It's a pretty good sign. Definitely. Yeah. That worth really not that bad. Going seven, lassoed up, sunstruck in, sunstruck rather, and he's gonna go down to Firefly. Sunstrucketh? He's sure, we'll go with that. So it's 49 at this point, Purge. Talked about Kaipi and, and their draft and, and what Vega can do. How confident are you feeling about Vega right now? I mean, it's looking okay for them. I, I feel like Kaipi's kind of lost a lot of map control that they had early on. They were doing very, very well at the start, but now it's been going a little more iffy. The ganks on Sing Sing have been fairly effective. I mean, that's the power of Shadow Demon. They, they're going to be able to be more, abuse Morphling Illusions now. It's just not looking too easy for them, really. Wow, he hits so hard with that Lacrity. 115 damage. Oh, Bambo. I believe you were dead. In one way or another. Uh, that was a massive gank. They they threw a lot of them to be fair. Does that count as a gank? It was it was basically just demonic purge while daytime and Messeroni got punished really hard is all. I, I just feel like they haven't been able to take anything aggressive against their opponents. Like they have they have Tinker, they have little uh birds and hawks and stuff that they can use to go aggressive, but it hasn't really happened. It's like Bambo's walking around putting pressure on, but they're not actually committing to ganks. They're all just kind of stagnating a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they were getting plenty of kills earlier on in this game, and, and stagnation is definitely the term I would use. They've been really focusing on FN so much that they forgot about the other heroes in the game, and so the Invoker has gotten a lot of room to work with. Iceberg has been farming very well. In fact, he's top of the net worth right now, which is pretty shocking. Veg has somehow turned it around. Oh, there's an Observer Ward. Are they smoking there? Oh, uh, did they smoke under that Observer Ward? Oh, uh, they might they have know. smoked under. They're going to be prepped for this, I think. Mike's going to try to break it. He does. Fly. He breaks the smoke. He's going to get out. They don't have a blink taker. They do, but he blinks away in time. Now FN going to come and pop the Manta. See you later. 3 3. Definitely blast, but FN's oh, low. low. Can they bring him down? Soul Assumption. The Strike Morph and Replicate out. It's too much. Sun Strike almost brings down Sig Sig. He will get up the Healing Ward, and then it goes down to the Forge Spirit. Oh, they only get one out of that fight, but they looked really good there. Yeah, 3-3 three, three making a bit, pretty big mistake in that he didn't roar in time, and he keeps overextending afterwards. Doesn't get that to Sable off, he's not ineffective. That's straightforward. Atos should be finished for Visage now. If he's got that, he does, okay. Could have helped in the team fight perhaps, but again, it was about smoking under the ward. Vegas just controlling the map, and the fight's so much better than Kaipi are. Didn't they? I was... Must have been Vega that bought the gem. I thought I saw a gym being purchased on Kaipi, but it's not the case. Meanwhile, bottom lane, 
Can they get this kill? They will find Bone 7, but Mag getting low as well. He'll be able to get it himself earned up. Lane Break is going to go and Pile die. He's not going to fall. They're going to look for another target. It said Seal was the easier kill, but he has a Blake Dagger. Still with the Hawk, they see him. The Roar will come out. No more TP now, and Seal will certainly fall here. He'll disrupt himself first, but it will be a one for one trade. Still very much worth it for Vega at this point. Yeah, Tinker's actually just died so many times that killing him doesn't even give them very much gold anymore. They actually got the same gold for the for the SD kills they did for the Invoker. The Kaipi's having some issues. They keep getting pressure wars. I don't know if they're just afraid of the Spirit Breaker charge or globalization of BOTs on Invoker with Sunstrike, but every lane keeps getting ganked. Yeah, it's, it's like this. It's the same movie over and over and over again, but sometimes with different skills. Sometimes it'll be Disruption Charge. Other times it'll be Blink, blink Lasso with a Waveform Sunstrike. It's just like there's so many ways to set up ganks here for Vega, and it's working out perfectly. And they're turning this game on its head. And Vega are starting to put pressure, and and it's something that Kaipi are really not able to deal with. Six Six Farm is stagnated. You talked about Bone Seven dying. Fn all the meanwhile has been farming extraordinarily well along with Iceberg. This is looking very dangerous, very scary situation now coming out as Iceberg picks up a Lincoln Sphere here, and I don't know how much longer Kaipi can last against this lineup. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse. I, I don't know if it was just a they didn't push lanes out properly problem, but I, I think that Kaipi's draft was really focused around the pushing. Remember, they did put a lot of pressure on the tier 2 mid, but it was so slow going. And by the time they had finished that, they wasted a lot of time. They didn't really get huge advantage from fights, except for a couple early runarounds. And then from there, it just the push stopped. They just kind of sat in their lanes. Lanes got pushed by Vega, and Vega started to get kills, and they haven't stopped since then. Definitely a tough game for Kaipi here. And yeah, now there's really a good late game race, but yeah, that's the next problem now. I mean, just about any hero with the exception of, well, yeah, you can play Fury it, but uh, uh, there's still the Sunstrike to worry about with the pure damage, obviously. So Vega are are confident. They look very, they look just as good as they looked yesterday. I feel a lot of it is to do with a couple of mistakes from Kaipi and some solid play all around. Again, FN looking very solid with his carry play. Here's I mean, the doesn't he always, right? Yeah, very true. I mean, zero every game seen. Nothing's weird here. Oh, Standard carry with zero deaths? Game. That's FN probably. Yep. He's going to be the new hot thing. I mean, he's been around hey, for I think a bit. So, man. But... He's, he looks like Miracle in some ways to me, although Invoker getting caught here. Iceberg, Lincoln Good. Spear, that's a great smoke, and Kaipi finally get back on the board with a dominant kill that will provide them Roshan. Uh, and Sig Sig is the one to pick it up. It's a 68 second death timer as well, so Invoker is nowhere near respawning. Vega will take the tier 2 as their trade and try to push into the tier 3 tower. They've seen Bamboo, I think. They've spotted him out. There's a ward there. They definitely know that he's there now. He'll get charged, but this is still kind of dangerous. And the void comes through. Yeah, it's like pretty easy now that he has eggs, huh? You can just, oh, the charge is coming, I'll take care of this guy. Oh, can and he interrupt? And uh, yes, he can. Wow. He's seeking oh, missile lasers. This is, this is really good with SB dead and Invoker dead if they can catch anybody. No, they're already all gone. Okay. They already left. They already TP'd out. Smart play. Uh, they make one critical error. They lose Iceberg and they give away Roche. And it felt like Vega could have perhaps pushed high ground there had they not lost Iceberg or. They would have threatened high ground if Iceberg had been with them. And maybe there would have been a wraparound gank and Kai P team fight would have ensued. But if they would gotten kills, they could have won the game. It would have been dangerous for, for Kai P. But instead, they kill Iceberg and they take Roche. So a bit of an interesting build for Bone7 now. He goes for a Hex. He's been working on this the whole time. Grabbed a Mystic Staff first. But it should help them really get Morphling kills. All they have to do is break the Lincolns. And they can do that in a variety of ways, including the Rod of Atos that Pilot I picked up, by the way. And then just do chain hexes, and if they can do that, then and kill Morphling a couple times, it should make the game a lot easier. Because if they don't have good Morphling solutions, he's going to continue not dying. So this hex is actually a really good pickup for that. Ah, uh, finally. Another build that's not Aether Lens and Eggs. Still not that I hate it. There's the hex up. The Roar's going to come out as well. He's going to lose all of his mana to the Necros. FN, see you later. That is exactly what you are talking about, Purge. That kind of gank is exactly what they wanted for Kai P, and they do, in fact, get it done. They executed that so perfectly, too. The instant, the instant that the Void came out, the Hex came out from Bone 7 as well, so almost no way that he gets to react to that. And yeah, the Necro 3's draining mana was huge as well. Just no replicate, uh, you can't morph anymore, made everything so straightforward. Now they can just go mid, maybe. Plane is being pushed in, though. I mean, they have, they have Bone 7. I don't think they're really concerned about any pushing scenarios. 
That's true. And they'll push into the high ground. They want to force out this buyback. And if they, they if they see that there is a buyback, which of course there is, then they they obviously just back away. But they need Ooh. to force it out, and they're going to try their best to. They're damned to force it out. The illusions. Oh no! Sing Sing has used his healing ward already because of him. Lasso. They'll find Bone Seven, but he gets hexed up or voided. It looks voided rather, not hexed up yet. Hex low. Here comes the MP. Deafening blast. Iceberg brings down the Tinker along with some help, and Sing Sing loses his Aegis. Vega defending beautifully without their morphling. Sing Sing lets his blade fury away. Nether strikes gonna come through. They can't afford to lose this Juggernaut. He might have to get brought down. As through the Mantis Tower, looks like he might get away, but the charge will come elsewhere. Mag getting low. Nice to the roar. They have detection, maybe? No! They don't see him. FNG is going to just sit right there and be fine. Meanwhile, there's the tornado clips onto two. Pilot Eye and 3 3 both in trouble. Pilot Eye getting right clicked down. Boom! Adaptive Strike gets the kill. A double for FN. Looking for the waveform. Doesn't get the triple, but they bring four down. And they did end up getting Zig Sing. And Bambo, the only survivor of that fight. He's got a gem. And they're going to bring him down as well. Sioma gets there in time. TP's in. Finds Bambo, and he'll get dropped. Wow, what a fight for Vega. No kidding. It all comes down to the fact that SD is one of the best agi carry stat building counters in the whole game, and Juggernaut has always been one of those characters. And it gets even worse now. They have Soul Catcher. Soul Catcher stays on through spin, so as soon as he disrupts Jug, they have like basically have their own Juggernaut. That's completely indispensable and has no threat in dying. It's bad. Seven. It actually stopped their whole push. Yeah, I mean, that was four versus five for the most part, and it was. Defended beautifully. X is up. That'll be end of mag. But the tier two tower will inevitably fall again. Now with everyone respawning, Vega will look to back and probably try to just take objective silver, including Roche. The only way that you can really solve this problem if you're a juggernaut is probably buy more HP than damage is one way. So if you bought something like maybe I have Scotty, it could give him a, a potential advantage. But or he could go more plus damage items, something like. I don't know, Manta and MKB, but then you're getting an, getting an inefficient build, so it just is very hard to tackle. How do you solve this problem? Maybe a Shadow Blade. I'm thinking that because SB picked one up. That's one way, just get away from the illusions. Or they've also got Hex on Kaipi on uh, Bone 7, so maybe they just double Hex the illusions, kill them that way. That's what they need to do to deal with this, because that's why they're losing these fights. It's all because of the Juggernaut illusions that the uh, Shadow Demon are spawning. And now Vega going for the jugular by smoking up. Again, Roche not up anytime soon. Didn't pick up an Invis run for FN, so his smoke will break. Smoking. Or rather, his smoke will break, but his Invis smoke won't. Smoke versus smoke. Both teams heading in kind of opposite directions. One going towards the mid lane, the other going to the top lane. And it looks like because of the smoke that Type P will avoid the deaths, but they need to TP back home probably right now. And they will. Glyph comes they, out pretty early too. They still don't have the detection, by the way. All they have is the Necro three. So, and there's a full Shadow Blade on the Spirit Breaker. Be really dangerous. Oh, look at this wraparound! Bambo's gonna go for it. Mag it looks like he's ready. The smoke is broken, but nobody's got vision. It looks like here we go. Three three's gonna jump and Mag gets roared up, and he falls instantly. Great start to the fight for Kaipi. Iceberg goes for the BKB, but the Omni Slash is there. He's taking it solo, and they've got vision. Iceberg about to go down. He will survive. Demonic Purge comes out. I think the the soul assumption. The soul catcher rather went on the necro warrior. Iceberg will survive. Bambo does go down, he'll have to buy back. And hmm, that, that is actually the end wasn't of it. that good. I, I really felt like they were gonna get more heroes. If Bambo didn't buy back there, they had a huge advantage, but he lost twelve hundred gold with that death and buyback. I don't that think that's justified forward. personally. Like no. he kinda needs a glimmer cape or something. Because whenever Morphling chooses to E blade him, there's just almost nothing he can do about it. Alright. That the Vega works gearing up for a push there, so that one kill on that kind of sets it back a little bit. I think they you need to the jump back too, is the important thing, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know who has it though. Uh, did they, did they get it back? Looks like Spirit Breaker might have picked it up. Yeah, Spirit Breaker has it currently. Yeah, they, they, they actually did stash. recover it. Well, nice to get up by him. Ooh, just... FN, Lotus Orb to make sure he can't get destroyed by that Hex, and he'll have to get out with a Replicate. Tornado will push everyone back again, and good try at the game. Now they're going in with FNG, Charge is going to go, but it doesn't quite hit Bone 7. Roar is there, FNG might be in trouble. 
Omni Slash coming through doing some nice work. Disruption actually it was on fixing no Omni Slash. He's gonna play pure way. He needs so to get good. out. He's not gonna make it. And again, it's that soul catcher that you're talking about. Disruption, the damage is significant. Pile I die will be next. Stephanie Blast and Sig Sing with no buyback. What fight for Vega again? Yeah, and I think they're finally gonna be able to get Rex here. Beastmaster's getting chased down. Sun Strike, that was nice. He does get the Necros off before he dies, so at least he's got that going for him. They'll and disrupt more, the Morphling. Morphling is so far ahead now, especially with the illusions. Like, every building is going to fall so rapidly. 17's doing everything he can, but there's only so much. Mag is looking for an angle to approach. Bone 7 heading towards the top lane. FN, in the meantime, is more like he's more worried about Bambo, who's going to get Tornado. The. Ethereal Blade kind of was at the same time as the Destruction, so that was kind of a mistake. But now Bambo is dead for 78 seconds, so they have kind of an 18-second window where all three of those heroes are dead, and they're going to head right towards that mid lane. Max smoked up. He wants to find Bone 7. I think that's the most important kill they could possibly get, but there's a scan there, and so they know Max positioning at this point, or they, at least they should. Illusion's high ground again. Goodbye, Rax. It should be. It will be. Look at that force forward. Mag was finding or looking for it, but now he's gonna have fuels himself. Lotus Orb's gonna come out and ooh, good grave you know, familiar drops, and they will find that kill with the day get from Bone Seven. You know, if if Bone Seven just went at the Ag's Aether Lens build, they might not have had any of this problems because they could have just done lasers, which are essentially AOE lasers on the Jug Illusions, and then Jug never would have died to any of those disruptions. Three but three overextended now. again, and Sioma. Well, at least he might go down. Although the familiar is not enough damage, he's able to reach it up, disrupt himself. Omni slash coming through. FNG taking a lot of damage, but it's not enough. And again, Sing Sing might be in a lot of trouble. FN Sunstrike. It's there. They need one right click. The hex is up. EMP not gonna hit. FN. It's the deafening blast that brings him down. Strength morph. Ethereal blade. Good dodge from Bone Seven. Gem. Nice pickup coming up from the courier. But it doesn't matter because they've lost four, well, at least three heroes as Bambo is still respawning. And an early roast timer as well, which is perfect for Vega if they wanted to go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, honestly, I think that's a, one of the bigger mistakes. They had a lot of trouble dealing with the disruptions, and the, the solution would have just been Aether Lens with eggs on Tinker. If you built that like normal, everything could have been different. They could have dealt with those Jug Illusions easily. They could deal with the Morphling Illusions easily, at least force them to buy an MKB. But he doesn't even have to this game because he can only laser one target. The Hex was useful a couple times, but the more important thing was that they hit their timing window where Jug was decent at high grounding, and they never had that due to there being a Shadow Demon in the game. That really hurt in this game. So do you think going forward, and it's maybe a little too late to talk about this, but Shadow Demon is uh, an appropriate ban for Kaipi or even appropriate pick for them? The only reason it was so abusive was because Juggernaut was their carry. And, and I know they played Juggernaut on Sing Sing a lot, and it was useful in a lot of ways. But if if you're playing against an SD, it is one of the best counters. Shadow Demon can always kill carries that are illusion-based. He can solo kill Morphlings, he can solo kill Jugs, he can solo kill TBs. Just with Disruption, Soul Catcher, Demonic Purge, that's all it takes sometimes. It's very good point so shadow demon if you're gonna pick a care like that you gotta know the shadow demon is this strong and i think sing sing and the rest of this squad of kaipi have learned their lesson at least in this game yeah. it's obviously not over yet but they've still learned very quickly that first hand shadow demon can be a monster given the time and, and utility you just forget about him in that way you you think like oh he's gonna do illusion spam whatever but just being able to soul kill the enemy carry with a support it's insane very few supports can do that are they going to go for this? They were looking to charge. I think FNG canceled it. They're going to send some illusions to scout things out. The Necro Archers. That's just illusions, by the way. I mean, I know it's a Necro. It's not the healthiest creep, but still does a lot of damage. And they're going to head right into the Roach Pit. Vega, but here we go. Kaipi looking to contest. They'll smoke up themselves. They're going to head over to Roche right now. This is where the fight's going to break out. Can they get Roche in time? It's low, and it will fall. They'll pick it up. Invoker gets the Aegis. Now F goes in. BKB. Oh, they Omni have slash. Lotus Orb. Nicely done coming out there. Sig Sig now gearing him up to try to get out, but the rest of the crew is dying slowly but surely. Bambo now on the run. You can look for it, but on the other side, Bone 7 getting chopped down by Iceberg. They found the disruption on Sig Sig. Bone 7 buys back, but it's too little too late. And Bambo, the only survivor of FN, they're just TPing to the lanes of Raxid, trying to finish this game off. This game number one, about to go Vega's way here, Purge, as they might lose more. Bambo might be in trouble. Yeah, the game is over. It's, yeah. They've just been losing way too many fights here, and the end of it.
Really nicely played by Vega though, the, the Shadow Demon made so much stuff happen in the early mid game. FNG played quite well, Batrider played well, pretty much everybody on Vega played amazing in that game. Just despite